Good morning, everyone. Before we begin today, I want to acknowledge the many, many support uh, messages that I received yesterday. Yesterday has to have been the most challenging broadcast I've ever done here at Coffee and Headlines um, because I was taken by surprise by this really acute and unexpected incident of depression. It made me feel very vulnerable but the vulnerability and the insecurity was quickly overcome by your many uh, displays of support. And particularly, I am grateful for those of you who took the time to write me privately and to share your own issues battling with your own depression or that of people in your life. For those of you that don't live with depression or maybe have not had a chance to see it up close and personal. Today, I will leave you with an important and beautiful video that I found, which is called, I Had a Black Dog, His Name Was Depression. This was put together by the World Health Organization, and it would mean so much to me if you all would spend some time watching this today. It's very short, but it will give you a good appreciation on how depression is real. And for some of us, it is something that is really a challenge. So with that said, again, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for providing for a safe environment for me to share my feelings. And hopefully for those of you that have issues that you wish to share for you to also feel comfortable sharing yours. This is Coffee and Headlines. Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Coffee and Headlines. Today is Tuesday, and today is a better day than it was yesterday, at least for me, and I'm grateful for that. As always, we are here gathered to take a look at headlines from our city, our state, and our country. We are here to examine what's on your mind, what your questions are, your comments, your suggestions about our live here in Puerto Vallarta, and to hopefully put together all this information uh, in a nice package so that we can better connect with the city, with our culture, and our way of life. Today is uh, October 18th. We are quickly moving through the month, getting close to Day of the Dead and Halloween and all these activities that make us so excited. And of course, the weather change is probably right around the corner. So we're keeping an eye on the weather forecast as always. Today, we have updates from our very uh, curious city hall and all the things that are going on there. We have updates about potholes. <laughs> and um, we have an interesting new venue that has opened in town. I want to tell you about it. And I, I think it's awesome what they're doing. And I can't wait to go and check it out. But first, as always, if this is the first time you are joining live, you can let us know that you are here by writing the word new in your comment and we'll be so very happy to give you a nice little welcome and if you are uh, if there's something on your mind that is really important that you want to be acknowledged or you want to comment about if you add a capital letter q at the beginning of your comment you make it easier for me to find the comment during the comment section but first how about some headlines Okay, so while the municipality of Puerto Vallarta's expense reports are still up in the air, the city council resumed their meeting with other important pending issues, including the approval of the city's income law, in which the sources of income for the year are outlined. Again, this is about income and not about how the city spends its funds which continues to be an unresolved, messy, and even legal affair. Where does that leave Mayor Michel? Well, 
This past Friday, he received a formal notification of the legal demand placed against, against him by council member Carla Esparza, um, of, um, who is accusing him of gender-based political violence. When questioned about this, Mayor Michel acknowledged the, no the legal notification, but he stated that he has not uh, treated anyone disrespectfully. And when asked about the alleged alternate government run by his sons, he continues to deny this allegation. I suppose it's all wait and see for this one. Now, this is sad, but I think it's funny. I'm not entirely sure that it's funny because my perception has been a little skewed over the past few days. But you would think that if you are the director of public works, works in any given city, you should know, you should not need a reminder that part of your responsibility is to fix potholes on the street. You shouldn't even need a reminder from your boss, the mayor, because it is part of your job, right? Well, now that the city council was able to resume their regular meetings, one of the hot topics was the issue of potholes throughout the city. And it's gotten so bad that the city council agreed to demand that they are fix, fixed immediately. And they even voted for it. Like the initiative was to propose that the director of municipal public works should develop and execute a permanent program that addresses potholes to bring a sense of security to drivers. Now, think about this for a moment. And, you know, one has to wonder why it takes a city council to tell a public works director who, of course, was hired for the job because of his or her expertise in public works related topics to do their job. Um, I don't know if it's funny. I don't know if it's pitiful, but this is the city that we live in, um, the most friendly city in the world and the city with probably most potholes in the world. You tell me what you think about that one. And if you were feeling miffed because the government told you that you couldn't smoke and drive in your car, you can relax. The government has changed their mind, or rather, they've decided to clarify the issue because apparently the new mobility law was not precise enough to indicate that the issue of drivers that smoke only refers to city bus drivers. And who would want to hop on a city bus with a driver smoking anyway, you know, that's a mystery to me. And I think I would find it revolting to uh, hop on such a vehicle. So I'm, I'm sure that those of you that smoke and drive are feeling better about this. So now let's take a quick look at the weather forecast and we'll take it from there. Jesus hula hopping, Jesus hula hooping, hopping Christ is part, it's partly, oh my God, let me start that again. Jesus hula hooping Christ, it's partly fucking cloudy. Okay, I can see that our weatherman is in a good mood today. It is 25 degrees right now, but humidity continues to be at 100%. It almost seems like humidity is wanting to leave with a bang or a sweat and right now, our temperature in Fahrenheit degrees is 78. Our weather forecast for today says possible light rain in the morning and afternoon with a high of 31 and a low of 24. There's going to be rain in the evening tomorrow with a high of 31 and a low of 24. And on Thursday, another humid and partly cloudy day. Again, a high of 31 and a low of 24. I did read an early report of a new tropical formation in the Pacific Ocean, but I decided to deny it because even though we're still in the middle of hurricane season, it would be absolutely weird to get a big one at this stage of the game. And now let's see, hold on just a second. Where do we go next? Oh, I thought this was absolutely awesome and I'm, I can't wait to hear your reports on this one. There is a new venue opening in Emiliano Zapata. It is called Oasis. Chances are that it is a venue that was something else and they just renamed it. It is located in the easternmost edge of Colonia Emiliano Zapata. 
it builds itself as the best new spot, the best new spot in Puerto, in Puerto Vallarta for drinks, food, and fun. I decided to check out their Facebook page, and I noticed that it has a stage that is presently being used for things such as salsa lessons, which sounds a lot of fun, by the way. But the venue owners have decided to put it to good use, offering something that, to my knowledge, has not been offered in Puerto Vallarta ever before, and that is open rehearsals. For example, there is this show that opens at the Palm in a few days, but Oasis must have reached an agreement with other venues to provide much needed rehearsal space, but also to open these rehearsals to the public. So if you want to have a sense as to what to expect on the actual show, you can attend the rehearsal because it's open to the public, grab a few cocktails and enjoy. Here's another example. This one is um, the one that I just showed you is taking place tomorrow. The one that I'm showing you now is taking place today. This is for a show scheduled to open at Act Two Entertainment at a yet to be announced date. But you can enjoy the rehearsal, which if you enjoy having access to the creative process, can be just as satisfying as the actual performance. Um, I remember when I lived in Boston and I worked as a volunteer at Symphony Hall, having access to open rehearsals by the orchestra was just as intriguing to me as seeing the actual performances. So what a great way to you know, get a sense as to what shows are going to be about. And in case you're wondering, this is, by the way, the first time I've seen any kind of new banner referring to Act Two. Um, the banner says that the show will open soon, but they haven't set a specific date. As you know, one of the biggest, um, loudest secrets or undiscussed affairs in the city right now is the legal mess that the late Danny Minini left behind at Act Two Entertainment. And uh, the people that are presently responsible for the venue are now in the process of restoring their ability to open to the public. I don't know exactly how that's going, but we certainly wish them much success in their process. And now that we have that out of the way, let us take a quick look at your comments and see what everybody is up to this morning. I appreciate your good mornings. As always, they mean so much to me. And, um, oh, thank you for that. I play the music. What is the name of the fun music you play during comments, says Wendy Lynn. The name, I don't know what it is, Wendy. It is part of licensed music that I use for my broadcast. This is music that you can actually use without getting into copyright woes. So I don't know the exact name of the music. I sure hope that you enjoy it. Let's see. Oh, a big hug. Thank you very much, Paula. I accept it lovingly and gratefully. Uh, let's see. Another big hug. Thank you very much, Christine. Uh, let's see. Doody -doo -doo. Margaret is counting. Nine more sleeps till I return to my Puerto Vallarta. That is awesome. Get ready for the potholes. You're going to love every bump. Um, actually, not really. The last time I was on a city bus, which was over the weekend, every time it went through a pothole or a tope, it's like my back <laughs> just bounced so much. It was not pretty. Um, another counter, Alfonso Borgen. Is counting down eight more days. Can't wait. How exciting. Um, let's see. Doo -dee -doo -dee -doo. Uh, da -da -da -da. I do feel better today, Daniel. Thank you. I don't think I am up to... Um, I'm, I don't think I'm completely comfortable doing a lot of social things just yet. But I'm definitely much better than, last, than yesterday. I had a full night's sleep. And I had comforting dreams. Isn't it? Does this happen to anybody out there? Whenever I'm having a difficult day, I can always count on my subconscious to send me nurturing dreams in environments that I enjoy and with people that I love. I don't know if that is just a crazy coincidence or what. 
Uh, oh, I see. Okay, so this used to be Que Pasa. I knew that Que Pasa had changed hands. So it is a good thing to see that the space is being purposed in one way or another. I wish the new owners much success. Uh, oh, Muffin, thank you so much. I love it because, you know, this weekend it was Logan and Paul who held my hand as I was feeling a little unsure of things. Um, and, and I wish for everyone to have loving, loving friends in your life for when things get tough. It's, it's an investment. It takes work, but it is worth every second. Um, let's see. Oh, more of an update. Oasis is the old que pasa. They plan to do more live entertainment, live music, drag, etc. They're opening the stage to performers to come and practice their shows. So in essence, you get a behind the scenes viewing. Owners were friendly when I was there. Thank you. Uh, that is that is wonderful news. I hope they are very successful in this. Um, I do know that que pasa or, you know, Oasis is located right next to other places that are home so i hope they have their sound level well handled but ultimately i hope they're very successful let's see let's see <laughs> love that happy music you know i'm gonna put it on a speaker <laughs> next time we have a we have a a meet and greet for coffee and headlines i'll bring it on a, on a usb stick so that we can enjoy it together uh-huh <laughs> Um, thank you for sharing your recent experience. It always helps to hear. It's normal to have down times. Um, it is something that I've been eloquent about. And as much as it is difficult sometimes, Heather, but um, I think it's part of my responsibility, not only to myself, to acknowledge what I'm feeling, uh, but also to share here in the cluster and to help other people make connections if necessary. Um, Arturo, I did notice yesterday that you wrote some comments about a health procedure that you had. I am glad to hear that you are feeling much better today and I'm glad that you connected with a friend of mine to learn more about that process. That's wonderful. Uh, Brad Bradley says a bigger problem in MPV is the sidewalks. Many people retire here and I don't know anyone here that has not tripped on these dangerous sidewalks. I have good news for you, Brad. Um, you don't have to be a retiree to trip on the sidewalks. I'm a Mexican national and I live here and I have tripped on the sidewalks as well. So I'm not contradicting you. I'm just joining you in acknowledging that yes, our sidewalks leave a lot to be desired. Unfortunately, hopefully, um, if the city council is successful with this latest way to get things to get done, they will also address sidewalks in the near future. Uh, let's see. <laughs> now that's funny. Well, not funny, but I love it. That is why there are so many orthopedic doctors in orthopedic stores in Puerto Vallarta. I love it. Uh, Gary has a question. Considering the upcoming Day of the Dead, would a non-Mexican dressing in a Day of the Dead costume week be considered offensive? I have had some conversations where some say no and others have equated it to wearing blackface. Wondering about my opinion. You know, Day of the Dead is everyone's celebration. I can't imagine the reasoning behind somebody thinking that wearing the Day of the Dead paint could be like wearing blackface. It's like apples and oranges. Um, a lot of people from Mexico and a lot of people from other countries come here to enjoy Day of the Dead. There are places where you can get painted. Um, one of them has been traditionally Cassandra Shaw's jewelry in Basili Vadillo. So Gary, please go out and enjoy Day of the Dead with the knowledge, or at least 
knowing that my opinion, and I'm sure the opinion of many, is that this is a very welcoming celebration. Um, blackface, interesting. Um, no, this is please, please go and have fun. And again, as I have mentioned, more often than not, knowledge of Day of the Dead events starts trickling slowly. And as soon as we continue to hear of more events, um, we will continue to post them or mention them here at Coffee and Headlines uh, because it is it is fun. Uh, Jeannie says, I do on Halloween, but not November 1st or 2nd. Um, interesting. I don't know what to make of that, but I mean, if, if you choose to do Halloween, that's lovely. And if you choose not to do November 1st or 2nd, that's lovely. Personally, I don't, I don't, I'd like to go out and, and watch the proceedings. I don't dress up for Halloween, and that's just my choice. I don't dress up for Day of the Dead, and that's just my choice. But I am uh, happy that it is such an important holiday or combination of holidays for so many people. Um, it is curious to see how Halloween and Day of the Dead are kind of mixed up in the minds of a lot of people, but um, but it is what it is. You know, the dates fall in, the, the holidays fall in dates that are near one another. So it makes uh, some sense that both of them would be celebrated around the same time here in Puerto Vallarta and surely elsewhere in Mexico. I lived in Mexico City uh, and I lived in Monterrey for many years and Halloween was just as popular. Anyhow, this brings us to the end of today's um, broadcast. Oh, let me see. Oh, this is important. I definitely want to address this. I wasn't sure if I would be offending others as I am not native to the country. Jeannie, um, please go out and celebrate Day of the Dead along with all of us from Mexico. It is not, it's not offensive in any way that I can think of. What can be offensive as long as we are on this topic, and I will just take a couple of seconds to mention this, is this issue of flocking to cemeteries and making a deal uh, out of seeing what other people are doing. The time spent by Mexican nationals at, at cemeteries during Day of the Dead is a very personal very private time so when you see people that just want to go in there and take photographs that is a little wonky um, and it has always been advised to the best of my knowledge that if you see families having their own ritual next to the graveyard of, of the to or the tombstone or of a loved one you know this is something that you know you want to keep a distance and you want to let people go through their very personal and family only process and that's just my two cents but other than that being out and about um as arturo has said we mexicans feel flattered when our traditions and culture are welcomed by foreigners so go ahead and have fun absolutely and this my friends brings us to the end of coffee and headlines for today we will be so very happy to be back here tomorrow and as always and as i mentioned before your company and your support and your nourishment of this community mean the world to me and that makes me very grateful go on and have an awesome day and i'll see you again soon